friends my name is arun kumar reddy my roll number is bt 10 b054 today i am here to talk about a technique which is widely used to distinguish two major classes of bacteria crystal violet a dye which irreversibly stains one class of bacteria but not the other and which forms the basis of this technique bacterial cell wall are mainly made up of two bio molecules namely peptidoglycan and lipopolysaccharide based on the amounts of these molecules present in a cell wall they are distinguished into gram positive and gram negative the gram staining method procedure is as follows first the bacterial smear is fixed on to a glass slide followed by which the treatment of crystal violet stains the bacterial cell walls with purple color in the next step the treatment with iodine solution ensures that the crystal violet dye is bound to the cell walls of bacteria in the decolorization step only one class of bacteria loses the primary dye which is crystal violet and the other class is stained by safranin or a secondary dye in the next step or rather final step and these are the pictures of gram negative and gram positive bacteria as seen under simple microscope as it may seem strange the bacteria with two different cell wall types react differently with gram staining gram stain thanks for giving me respected sir and my dear friends a very good evening to one and all i am kiran koshi and my roll number is e e 10 b 1 21 today i am going to talk about 3d photography we perceive in three dimensions using images captured by our eyes which are separated by about 7 cm we use the same principle for taking 3d photos we take photos of the object from two separate points which are separated by a distance that is equal to the distance between our eyes then these images are directed into the in different separately directed into our two eyes using a technique called stereoscopy the basic uh, setup is an eyepiece a barrier and an image stand an excellent example of this is the view master an improved version of stereoscope is anaglyph in which two images are captured by two different colors one red and other cyan then these are directed into the eyes by a filter another improvement i would like to talk about is the increase in depth perceived by increasing the distance between the two cameras or the objectives it's a widely used technique in military binoculars i hope you enjoyed it thank you have a nice day i wish one and all present here a very fine evening i am gokul and my roll number is ch10 b017 today i am here to talk about the lathe machine which are very familiar to us in our first year a lathe machine is a machi machine tool which turns cylindrical material touches a cutting tool to it and cuts the material the lathe is one of the machine tools most well used by machining now let me tell you the working of the lathe machine in a sequence firstly fix the workpiece firm and tight inside the chuck select the appropriate cutting tool and fix it with the compound which is above the cross slide then see to that the tail stock and the cutting tool are in the same vertical level and then initially move the cross slide and touch the workpiece with the cutting tool and set the reading to 0 near the cross slide hand wheel now fix the sending speed cutting depth and the rotating speed accordingly the finishing will be done now these are some of the disadvantages and suggestions 
which I have <coughs> in my first year. Firstly, fix a, fix, fixing of jobs in a four jaw chuck and inaccuracy in a three jaw chuck, and then spilling of unwanted chips. The suggestions which I have come up with are to use a synthetic rubber, rubber chuck having more tensile strength for more accuracy, and then to use a slide over cover over the workpiece to avoid spilling of chips. Thank you, friends, for giving me a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Good evening, respected sir and my dear friends. My name is Vimal, and my roll number is CH10B073. Today, I'm going to talk about shape memory polymers, which I regularly encounter during the course of my research project. The given slide shows and gives us a basic idea of the shape memory process. In this case, the sample is transformed into the temporary shape by the programming process and is later recovered by heating the sample above the transition temperature. The triple shape memory effect as shown in this slide is shown by those polymer systems which possess two separate phase transitions and the temporary shapes S1 and S2 exist above and between these transition temperatures. Quantification of the shape memory process is done by calculating the values of strain fixity rate and the strain recovery rate from the given graph. When I calculated these values, they turned out to be 84.5% and 96% respectively. This slide gives us an idea of the future applications of this process. This car is designed to be implemented by the year 2050. The front end of the car is designed by shape memory process and a given platform slides down so that elderly citizens can walk up the platform. Thanks a lot for your time. Good evening friends. I am Rohan Bendre. Roll number BT10B036. My topic for this cycle is bicycle. Every one of us here has once owned a bicycle. It is very robust and can be truly called the universal vehicle. The bicycle skeleton has several important parts. The seat carries the passenger. The handlebar controls the direction. The brake reduces speed. The pedal is where the foot rests and generates energy by rotation. The chain transmits this energy to the wheel which manifests itself in forward motion. A bicycle works on the ratchet mechanism. The pedal converts our energy into rotatory motion of the front gear. The chain transmits this energy into the back gear which induces motion of the wheels. A group of students from our very own institute had improved upon the existing design of the bicycle by building a self-balancing cycle. This prototype could self-balance using inclinometers and also self-steer using image processing and uh, a self-balancing tool. A bicycle is a very useful and highly efficient engineering product. Hence, it is no wonder that so many bicycle thefts are reported in our institute. Thank you. Good evening to all. My name is Aparna. My roll number is CS10B003. Today, I am going to talk about vacuum cleaner. The vacuum cleaner consists of the following parts. Intake port fan, rotating brush, electric motor, dust bag, filter and an exhaust port. It works based on the suction principle. The dust is drawn 
into the intake pore, passed through the pipe and gets dissipated into the bucket. The rotating fan would then drive it to the ambient atmosphere through the exhaust pore and the filters. Some improvements that I would like to suggest are the following. A portable vacuum cleaner is much simpler and handy to use. Automatic cord rewind makes it faster to use as the pipe can be wound quickly. Telescopic extension tubes can be used to make the vertical chamber longer or shorter as desired. A 360 degree rotatable hose can make it more accurate to clean into the smaller parts as the shelves and desks. Thank you and have a great day. Hi friends, I am Ashwini. My roll number is EE09B065. I am going to say a few words regarding artificial limb. As you can see in the image, her name is Claudia Michel. She was one of the world's first women to undergo this nerve rerouting surgery. These instruments are basically made by plastics and carbon fiber so that the material gets stronger. The pylon acts as an inter frame or skeleton and provides structural support and this is made by metal rods. Socket acts as the interface with the limb that gets attached to the limb directly wherever the injury is. Inside the socket there is a thermoplastic sheet that strengthens the structure. The silicon liner are basically made for the fingers since the cross section area is circular in shape. The muscle signals are read by small electrical antennas called electrodes so that the biceps and triceps can be made much easier to open as well as to close the finger. Some Im improvements are by implementing infrared radiation so that the reflex action gets faster. In the diagram you can see that the joints are made. Thank you. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. I am Siddharth, CE10B073. The 21st century has seen the advent of the global positioning system. The answer to questions like where am I or how do I get to a place has become just a few clicks away. So how exactly does this system work? The GPS technology consists mainly of the following three segments the user segment, the space segment and the control segment. The GPS handset emits a code synchronous with the space station code. The phase difference between these two codes are used to measure the distance between them. Now spheres are drawn with the satellite vehicles at the center and radii equal to the distance between the handset and the space station. Any point at any time on the surface of the earth is within the radius of three of these satellites. The intersection of these spheres from two satellites are used to confine the position of the point to a circle on the earth. And with the third sphere, it is confined to just two points. One of the points is eliminated based on physical feasibility. Hence. We can uniquely identify the location of the point on earth. The present GPS satellite constellation is called Navstar and is owned by the US. Hence all the power and control rests with them. A challenge for India is to set up its own constellation and hence become technologically independent.
Thank you. Good evening, sir and friends. I am Chinmay Bapat, CS one zero B zero five nine. I am going to speak about satellite phones. Satellite phones are useful for communication in remote areas. They are the only means of voice communication on ships. The main components of this system are the satellite phones. The satellites, which can be either geostationary or low earth orbit satellites, and a terrestrial gateway for communication with terrestrial cellular and landlines. When a call is placed from a satellite phone to a landline, the phone communicates with a satellite that is in direct line of sight from the phone. This satellite passes on the data to other satellites until it reaches one which is in a direct line of sight from the terrestrial gateway. From here, the call is handled like a normal telephone call. A major problem with satellite phones is that they are very expensive to use. Outgoing calls can cost as much as a hundred rupees a minute. If a shared network of satellites was used instead of the current individual networks for each service provider, it would lead to a great reduction in operational costs and would reduce the cost of each call. Thank you. A very good evening to all of you. I am Aman Kumar. My roll number is BT10 B003. And today I am here to discuss the effect of nano packaging on bread spoilage. For preparing nano package, we use a technique called electro spinning. In electro spinning, we supply a high power voltage and the polymer solution in the syringe gets charged up and when it comes through the nozzle, it gets elongated and forms a fiber. The fibers are then collected over the collector and this is how we get the nano package. After preparing the nano package, we took the sample and packed it in the packages. Then we incubated it for 7 days. After 7 days, we crushed it and added 0.9% of saline into it. We went for centrifugation and after centrifuging it, we took the supernatant out of it and then plated on the nutrient agar medium. And after two days, it was observed that in the case of nano package, the sporulation was seen, which is represented by NP. And in case of polypropylene, fungus growth was observed and no sporulation was found. Thus, it was preferred to use nano package over polypropylene package. Thank you and have a nice day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Siddesh and my roll number is CE10B079. The screenshot from the movie Harry Potter tells you about the overall picture about the idea of levitation. Well. The principle of levitation exists and is named Meissner effect after the scientist Walter Meissner discovered it in the year 1933. We'll look at the experimental setup of the Meissner effect. And we require a foam container, a superconductor, some amount of liquid nitrogen and magnet. First, we take a foam container and then we place the superconductor at the center of it. And then very slowly and very carefully, we pour the liquid nitrogen in the container and by wearing proper glasses and gloves. Then we try to place the magnet over the superconductor using tongs and we see that the magnet gets levitated in the air 
and that is the magnetic levitation. The principle behind this is that when the superconductor is cooled below its critical temperature, then in the presence of external magnetic field, it develops the magnetic domains which repel the source of the magnetic field that is the magnet. So, it gets lifted up. This phenomena has found many applications and one of it is the maglev train being built in Japan. The maglev stands for magnetic levitation. Thank you all of you. Respected sir, my dear friend, good evening. I am Kalpesh Benuskar. My roll number is CH 10B008. Today, I will talk about static mixer. Static mixer is a device which mixes a fluid flow in homogeneously. As its a name suggests, this device mix uh, this device work statically. Therefore, it does not it does not require energy except for passing the fluid through the through the static element. As you can see in this figure, the static mixer is a fix in a pipe. Next is mechanism. Fluid, flu, uh, static mixer element divides a fluid flow in a two parts. And uh, because of a helical structure of a some mixer element, this, this fluid, uh, fluid converges as a fluid passes through the mixer. These processes creates a turbulence inside the mixer and uh, as a result, it um, fluid gets homogeneously mixed. Next is uh, improvement in the model. Mixer geometry should be improved so that the pressure drop across a mixer will be minimum. We can use a plastic as a mixing element to reduce a cost of a model. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dinesh Soundapa, and my roll number is CE10B017. Today, I'm going to speak to you about GFRC panels, glass fiber reinforced concrete panels. The introduction of these panels is a major breakthrough in the field of construction. These panels are of high strength, load bearing, quick to erect, economical and also eco-friendly. These panels are generally of 124 mm thick and in the hollow sections, reinforcement, plumbing, electrical services are placed and later for additional strength, concrete is poured into it. Now in this slide, you can see a house built with the help of GFRC panels and the build specification of the house is shown. Now moving on to the process of erecting these panels. First, the location of these panels is supposed to be marked with respect to the grid line. Then starter rods are supposed to be placed on top of the foundations. Third, panels are supposed to be put in place with the help of a crane. Fourth, the panels are supposed to be propped and connected to each other. Fifth, reinforcement is placed inside the hollow section. Sixth, the concrete is poured and it's ready to use. In such a manner, construction can be made easier, faster, and more economical. In this slide, you can see that GFRC panels is more effective in terms of cost, labor, time compared to other construction materials. It's very well indicated and you can see in terms of labor, it's just almost triple the amount. Thank you. Good evening friends. I Raghavendra CS10B018 am here to talk about the engineering of a cryptex. This word is a neologism which originates from the combination of the words cryptology and codex. It denotes a portable vault used to hide secret messages. Let's see how a cryptex works. 
it mainly has two concentric cylinders. The secret message is hidden inside the inner cylinder. The inner cylinder has a set of nails protruding out of it in a straight line. The outer cylinder has a channel through which the inner cylinder can pass, through, pass in or out. The only thing that blocks this motion is the presence of alphabet rings around the outer cylinder between the nails. The only way the nails can have a free path to move in or out is when the rings are, are, are set such that all the grooves are aligned perfectly with the channel. This is when the password is set to be set and the secret is revealed. The possible improvements to this, to this device can be the use of a vinegar vial around the message which can break and destroy the message if someone tries to force open the device. It can also have changeable passwords or also it can be a multi cryptex which opens on having multiple passwords. There can be more but I will like to stop it here. Thank you. Respected sir and my dear friend, a very good evening to one and all. I am Surya Teja and my roll number is CS10B004. Today I would like to explain briefly the working of a coffee maker. These are some of the important parts of a coffee maker. Now coming to the process, initially the ground coffee beads are placed in the shower head and the water is poured in the reservoir. This water slowly seeps through the hole into the orange cube. From there, the water passes through a valve which is the natural gravity and it gets into the aluminum heating element. This aluminum rod heats up the water and it gets boiled. This boiled water slowly seeps up through the white tubing due to capillary action and it dispersed to drip the evenly distributed beans in the shower head. From there it flows down, capturing the essence oil in the beads which is known as coffee oil and it is collected in the carafe. Finally, it is mixed with boiled, wat boiled milk to obtain pure filter coffee. Some improvements could be the inclusion of programmable timer, built-in grinder for fresh and faster coffee, self-cleaning cycles and filtration systems also improve its functionality. Thank you and have a nice day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Raju Shekhar and my roll number is CS10B012. Today, I would like to discuss about the construction and working of solar panels. Solar panels use light energy from sun to generate electricity through photovoltaic effect. Since a single solar panel only generates a limited amount of power, most installations contain multiple panels. A typical photovoltaic system includes an array of solar panels, an inverter, a controller and an electronic box. So how do these solar panels work? A solar panel essentially consists of a PN junction diode. The, the glass chamber on the top of the P-type material is made as thin as possible so that the incident light's photons may easily reach the junction. These photons collide with valence electrons such that, such that they, they will be imparted with sufficient energy to leave them out of their parent atom. So, both holes and electrons are generated on both sides of the junction due to which current is produced. The amount of current produced is directly proportional to the illumination and also to the size of the surface area being illuminated. One major way to reduce cost uh, involving solar panels 
is to make silicon vapor uh, more effectively. Solar cells should also be made more efficient, so, such that the more power can be produced with given amount of material and also it decreases installation costs. Thank you. Have a good day. Good evening everyone. I am Pranav. My roll number is EE10B008. Today, I am going to describe the working of an air cooler, a common household appliance. These are the main parts of an air cooler. The air cooler works by drawing in outside air through moist filter pads. The air cools down when the, the water in the filter pads evaporates. The filter pads also filter the impurities such as dust and pollen from the, from the air drawn into them. The, the filter pads are kept moist by running water from water distributor to water reservoir. This is done by a pump. The air inside, the cool air inside is blown outside through the bowler, blower. These are some of the suggestions to improve the water and power efficiency of an air cooler. By introducing automatic controls like um, temperature pro programmable temperature control, the the air cooler can be switched off when the temperature reaches to a minimum a minimum state. Thank you. Respected sir and dear friends, good evening to one and all. I am Deepak. My roll number is NA10 B0 08. The topic I have chosen is cloud computing, which is said to be the future of computer industry. Cloud computing is the delivery of computing as a service rather than a product, whereby resources are provided as a utility like electricity. Consider a corporation. Buying computers for all employees isn't enough. Softwares and its licenses are also required to provide all the employees with the required tool. This is where cloud computing comes in. Instead of having softwares for all computers, you just have to load one application which allows the worker to log into a web-based service that hosts the required program. Web-based email services like Gmail, Yahoo, etc. are forms of cloud computing. Cloud computing can be divided into two, front and back end. Front end is the client's computer and the back end consists of systems like huge data storage systems and servers which make the cloud of cloud computing. The biggest concerns about cloud computing is that they lack privacy and security. This can be solved by authentication techniques like username and password. The main advantage of cloud computing is that it reduces the software and hardware demands on user side. Thank you. Good evening. My name is M. Sai Vijayendra and my roll number is EE10B111. Today, I am going to speak about bread toaster. Bread toaster basically is a small kitchen appliance and it takes about 1 to 3 minutes for a, to toast a bread, bread slice and its temperature can be controlled and it can toast from 2 to 12 pieces at a time. The parts of the bread toaster are as shown in the slide. It has bread slots, an electric plug, a bread lifter, temperature setting dial and a side out tray. 
moving to the functionality, uh, just switch on the toaster and place the slides of the bread in the bread slots and you can adjust the temperature as required. Just remove the side tray and you can remove the bread slices by using the bread lifter. But it has many disadvantages. For example, in our mess, not every student is capable or uh, do not have sufficient time to toast their bread slices. So instead of go using the same thing, we can move to the pop-up toaster, which is a new uh, variety. Uh, it's quick and it's very e easy to use. It's versatile and it works well with different kinds of breads. It automatically pops up the bread once the toasting is finished and it consumes less power than the previous one. And the bottom one is as shown in the slide, it's an open up toaster and we can toast the breads and bread, breads to barbecue items in this. Thank you. Have a nice day. Respected sir, dear friends, good evening. I'm Darshan V. Roll number BT10 B050. It is my pleasure to speak to you today on clinical thermometers. A clinical thermometer is used to measure body temperature. It consists of a mercury bulb and a stem which contains the capillary tube. There is a constriction above the mercury bulb. It works on the expansion of fluids. It works on the principle of expansion of fluids. The mercury rises and falls in the capillary tube based on changes in temperature. The constriction makes sure that the mercury does not fall suddenly, thereby enabling us to take the reading correctly. The sensitivity of clinical thermometers can be improved by making the bulb as large as possible. When the total volume increases, the change in volume for a given change in temperature also increases. As per the equation, delta V equal to KV delta T, where delta T is the change in temperature, K is the thermal coefficient, and V is the total volume. The sensitivity can further be improved by making the capillary tube as narrow as possible. The use of a liquid with higher thermal coefficient can also lead to better sensitivity. Thank you and have a nice evening.